Hi, my name is Bob Valentine from Techno CNC Systems, and we're going to be going over how to resurface our spoil board on our HDS CNC router. First off, a few things you need to know before we get started. A few materials. We're going to be using a two and a half inch Amana fly cutter. You're going to need your tool holder, which is going to go into the spindle. Our half inch collet ER32. Our collet wrench, as well as our memory stick that contains our NC file that's going to be ran on the machine. Now let's go to the back of the machine and talk about some tools. So here at the back of the machine, we have Techno's tool holder vise, which is pretty nice when it comes to tightening down your tools. It doesn't require two wrenches, only one. You take your tool holder, unscrew your collet nut. We're going to throw it in the vise so that our flat pieces are parallel with our uh, vise here. We will take our collet nut, our collet wrench out, place it down here, and snap our ER32 half inch collet in place. So now that we have our collet in, snapped into our collet nut, we're now ready to start threading it onto our tool holder and then inserting our two and a half inch amount of fly cutter. We're going to throw the tool holder into the vise. There's these flat pieces right here that'll line up perfectly onto the vise. Then we could start threading on our collet nut. Once you start feeling some resistance from the collet nut, that means it's time to put our cutter in. Now, with the cutter, the good rule of thumb is to throw in the cutter about three quarters of the length of the shank. So we're going to throw it in there about three quarters of an inch away and tighten her down by hand first. Now that we got her good and tight by hand, it's time to really crank down with our collet wrench. Now with, with our vise here, all we have to do is insert the, the wrench and start cranking down. And that seems nice and tight to me. Now we're ready to throw this tool into our spindle, load our program, and resurface our board. So now we're back at the front of the machine and we're ready to throw our tool into our 12 horsepower HSD spindle. To do so, we grab our tool, grab it firmly by the neck here, insert the tool into the spindle, and press this yellow button at the top here. The chuck will then grab onto the, the pull stud and pull the, the tool off. You can give it a tug and a quick spin to make sure it's in there right. Now that we have the tool in the spindle, we're now ready to load our G-code file from our CAM software. To do so, we plug in our memory stick into the USB port located at the bottom of the, sheet, the controller here. We'll minimize our interface. We'll open up our folder, look for our file right here, resurfacing 4x8. We'll copy that. Then we'll open up our programs folder and paste it into here. Now you see the programs right here. We'll, we could then X out of everything, go back to our interface, go to G code file located right here on our interface, click on that, and then choose the file we'd like to load. Ours is resurfacing 4x8. We'll highlight it and then click activate part. Once you activate the part, you can X out of this G code file. And now you can see our resurfacing 4x8 program is loaded here with four lines of G code. Now we're ready to set our origin, turn our vacuum on, and run this program. So now I have my vacuum pump on. I have all four zones open so that it's holding down my entire sheet of MDF. Now I'm ready to set my origin. I put the, the controller onto hand wheel mode. 
which is our manual pulse generator right here. And now I'm going to carefully move the gantry to where I would like my origin to be. First I'm going to lower down my Z. Until I'm just above the spoil board. Now this is good because I'm going to get a very accurate reading on where my X and my Y origins should be. Now when calculating your X and Y origins with this type of fly cutter, you want to make sure half of the cutter is on the board and half of the cutter is off the board in both the X and Y directions. This will give you the most accurate origin you can get. So I'm going to move my Y axis up more until I reach the end of the table. I'm going to rotate my cutter this way so I can get a better reading. Just going to move over to this side here. And right there seems to be about a good spot for my Y origin. Now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm going to do my X origin. Alright, so now that I got my X and my Y, it's time to bring my Z axis down just till I'm just touching this board. Once this is finished, I can go back onto my interface and I can set this spot to be my origin. Back here at the interface, you're going to notice an MPG enabled warning up here. This is essentially telling you your hand, your manual pulse generator is still active and you need to throw it into continuous mode in order to save your origin. So after I throw it into continuous mode, this warning disappears and I'm ready to save my origin. Down at the bottom here is my save origin button. This will bring me to a new screen. Now. Before we set our origin, we have to identify the tool in the chuck. This is essentially going to determine if we have the right tool in the chuck that we have programmed. I have programmed this NC file for tool number one, so I'm going to also identify this as tool number one. After I identify the tool, I'm going to go to ORI set. I'm going to select origin number one, and then put zero values in for X, Y, and Z. Once I click OK, my origin is now set and I'm ready to return to the main screen. After I return to the main screen, I want to go back into continuous mode to get rid of this window here. And now I would like to lift up my Z axis, that way my spindle doesn't start on top of the material. After my Z axis is raised, I want to click Auto and then Cycle Start to begin the program. 